Greetings and salutations, my fellow DMs, GMs, referees, judges, game operation directors, and all the other varieties of storytellers. This is your DM, Bill, and it's time for another DM Quick Tip. I'd like to talk to you about potions. Now, this discussion is not about the simple act of uncorking a stopper from a bottle and imbibing a specific liquid for a singular desired effect. I'm talking about the purposeful or accidental mixture of potions, and to a lesser degree, even the blending of unguents, salves, and poultices. There are countless ways in which potions can end up mixed together. And it's not necessary to go over how this could possibly happen. Hey, accidents happen. You know, accidents, wink, wink, nod, nod, say no more. What's important are the effects and what specifically happens to the player characters afterwards. The term for this unpredictable cocktail is potion miscability. Now, with a simple search on the interweb or Google Net, FaceTime or YouTube, whatever they're called, you should be able to find a variety of tables and charts as references. Now, being the old grognard that I am, I refer to the books from way back when as my source information when this occurs. Specifically, the May 16th, 1976 edition of the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master's Guide. With this old reliable tome, lies the table and explanations comfortably cozied up on page 119 for your personal perusal. And without the worry of power outages, hard drive failures, or the family pet walking across the keyboard as you try to enter a search, not to mention the possibility of burned out retinas as you stare at a screen turned up so bright it rivals the sun. Well, how about we take a moment and read through the descriptions and effects for potion miscability, shall we? The book states... The magical mixtures and compounds which comprise potions are not always compatible. You must test the miscibility of potions whenever, one, the potions are actually intermingled, or two, a potion is consumed by a creature while another such fluid already consumed is still in effect. While it is possible to prepare a matrix which lists each potion type and cross-reference each to show a certain result when one is intermingled with another, such a graph has two drawbacks. First, it does not allow for the differences in formula from chemist and or magic users. Second, it will require continual addition as new potion types are added to the campaign. Therefore, it is suggested that the following table will be used with perhaps the decision that, for instance, a delusion potion will mix with anything, that oil of slipperiness taken with oil of etherealness will always increase the chance for the imbiber to be lost on the ethereal plane for 5 to 30 days. And treasure-finding potions mixed with any other type potion will always yield a lethal potion. Whatever certain results you settle upon for your campaign, the random results from the table apply to all other cases. So, there's a description of miscability that's given in the book. Now let's move on to the table, shall we? For this table, you need percentile dice. That's right, Wizards of the Coast. Percentile dice. Not a D4, not a D6. This is when they seem to put a little more effort into the tables, you know, the ones that are available in the books. That particular subject has been broached by DM Scott and me several times during numerous book review episodes, but I'm not going to get into that currently. The multi-tiered and in-depth table has two columns that show your dice scores and the associated results, with the more severe results being pared down to a much smaller percentage, and in contrast, the more common and lesser severe results indicated by larger percentages. Let's get into it, shall we? A dice roll of one, explosion. Internal damage is six to 60 hit points. Those within a five foot radius take 1d10 hit points. If mixed externally, all in a 10 foot radius take four to 24 points no save. Two to three, lethal poison results. Any imbiber is dead. If externally mixed, a poison gas cloud of 10 foot diameter results and all within it must make save versus poison or die. Four to eight, mild poison, which causes nausea and loss of one point each of strength and dexterity for five to 20 rounds. No saving throw possible. One potion is canceled. The other is at half strength and duration. 
Use a random determination for which is canceled and which one is at half efficiency. 9 to 15. Miscability. Both potions totally destroyed as one cancels the other. 16 to 25. Immiscable. One potion canceled, but the other remains normal. Random selection. 26 to 35. Immiscable. Results which causes both potions to be at half normal efficiency when consumed. 36 to 90. Miscable. Potions work normally unless their effects are contradictory. Uh, Diminutive and growth, which will simply cancel each other out. 91 to 99. Compatible result which causes one potion, randomly determined, to have 150% normal efficiency. You must determine if both the effect and duration are permissible, or if only the duration should be extended. 100. Discovery. A mixture of the two potions has caused a special formula with which causes one of the two potions only to function, but its effects will be permanent upon the imbiber. Note that some harmful side effects could result from this. And roll miscability secrets whenever it occurs. Give no uncalled clues until it's necessary that a roll is being made. Now this is the base chart that I use as a reference. Then there are instances that involve possible mixing of potions, unguents, salves, potuses. In 5th edition, this is most likely to happen when your alchemist or your artificers and, of course, those curious magic users get involved. Occasionally, at least to a lesser degree, your clerics. That's where all the gooey topicals come into play. You know, when they use their medicine roll to apply the healer's kit and then roll horribly. Those healers are always ready, willing, and able to give a healing potion or some kind of magical topical ointment, not paying attention to the fact that there may be other magics affecting the character. Now, this does not mean that every time any potion gets near any other potion, you immediately need to reference this chart or any other like it. This is a well that should only be dipped into occasionally. Please take a little common sense into consideration and only apply these effects if the story calls for it, or their players are being a bit haphazard in their application of magical elixirs. And then, temper the results if necessary, to match the level of players and severity to the situation. You don't really want to be blowing up your first level characters on a roll of one, and then your effect taking out the remaining party members, although it would be a spectacular TBK. Unless, of course, they're trying to mix different magical elixirs, hoping to see some spectacular results. Then all the bets are off. Have at it. Now, if you excuse me, I'm heading for the bar for a mixed drink. Hey, Scott, what did you say was in this funny shape bottle? Eh, never mind. Doesn't matter. It looks tasty. And the old man is thirsty. I'm DM Bell, and that's my look at Potion Miscability. See you next time in the dojo. You can support the Dungeon Master's Dojo in some very simple ways. Be patronizing, like Lou, and become a patron on Patreon, and unlock exclusive patron content. Or if you're like Scott and long-term commitment is an issue, you can buy us a sake, shop our merch page for DMD swag, or use our drive through RPG affiliate link next time you shop drive through RPG. Or visit us on the web at the DungeonMastersDojo.com. There, you'll find links to all the above. Don't forget to email us and say hello. Thanks for listening.